Golden Freddy. Golden Freddy is a bipedal rusty golden bear with lighter accents on his muzzle, ears, and stomach. He is black scleras, representing a stairless entity. I probably said scleras wrong, but you know what? I don't really care. He has multicolored wiring popping out of his eye sockets, arms, mm, ears, knee pads, feet, everywhere. It can, it will poke out. It's like a liquid. Golden Freddy's muzzle also has supportive gaped teeth, including his lower jaw. His teeth also appear to be a grayish white, resembling rust, kind of. I mean, it's 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 a weird kind of rust. I don't know why the wiki says that. He appears to be slumped over sitting down, and as most of his iterations are. But in Ultimate Custom Night, Golden Freddy will occasionally appear in the office after the player closes down the monitor. The player must pull up the monitor again quickly or use the Freddy mask to make him disappear. Staring at Golden Freddy for too long will end the night and his and will, he'll jump scare you. Although I think the reason this version is so scary is because you can't get rid of him with the death coin. Because if you try, he'll get jump scared by psychic friend Fredbear and you'll lose. So just hide. Just hide. That's what the, these games teach us. Don't fend for yourself. Just hide. Hide in a mask. Hide behind your tablet. Hide behind technology. That's what all you commenters do anyways, right? In at 9, Ennard. Ennard is the true main antagonist of Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, composed of the endoskeletons of the Sister Location animatronics, and makes a return in Ultimate Custom Night. Ennard is one of the many fun time animatronics, and is a human-like animatronic with weird, with like a, a weird wire endoskeleton body. He has a white mask, a red nose, red eyebrows, and a green, yellow colored party top hat, and his body consists of wires with an endoskeleton, but it also has a, like a red button and multiple eyes all over it, representing the different fun time animatronics. And in Ultimate Custom Night, Ennard climbs in the vents system, but unlike other animatronics in the vents, he is difficult to track, appearing only briefly here and there while moving. He can't really be seen in the vent opening, but gives himself away by making a squeaking sound before attacking. You gotta close the vent door to send him on his way. Aside from being just one of the creepiest animatronics design-wise, this dude is just a whole load of worrying crawling around through the vents. So, yeah, this man is getting on the list 100%. And it ain't Music Man! <laughs> Music Man is a viable animatronic from FNAF 6, Pizzeria Simulator, and returns as an antagonist in Ultimate Custom Night. Music Man is kind of bipedal, although it, like bipedal means you walk on two legs. This man uh, eventually ends up having four. I don't know if it's this version has four, but he's white with uh, pink accents on his eyelids, lips, nose, stomach, and uh, has some purple accents around several areas. He represents a humanoid entity with spider-like legs blotched with purple coloring. His eyes are completely black with white pupils, similar to Freddy, and he has a black top hat guided with a white stripe, because of course, why do so many of these animatronics have top hats? His stomach contains a speaker with two separated speakers similar to the fun times. His symbol is yellow and has gray handles, but his properties are pretty damn special, okay? See, Music Man is sound activated, so with too much noise going on in the office, it will make him start crashing his symbols. The player must then stop making noise or he'll crash the symbols faster and faster, and eventually he'll jump scare you. And honestly, this is one of the most terrifying things in the game because the volume of the game itself is something that we can control, like through our computer but the noise that the game makes isn't something that we have any say over. So you, in part, just need to hope that you're lucky, and then deal with the noise threats as they pop up. In at 7, Freddy. feel like this one's kind of obvious, but I have to say it anyway. Freddy was the mascot when the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza opened up in 1983. And in 1987, he and the original animatronics had fallen into severe disrepair. That's when Freddy was replaced with his newer counterpart for the improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. You know, Toy Freddy. After that, Pizzeria closed as well as the toy animatronics getting scrapped, though they refurbished the old animatronics for the new pizzeria, which was the old pizzeria, which is the one that we see in the first game. Yeah. That's FNAF. However, after the closure of that pizzeria, he and the other animatronics got dismantled by William Afton, the killer of the series. But uh, Freddy is literally the title character, okay? Of not only the movie, but the series as well. And while he may not have originally been intended to move off the stage, he does now. He's the most iconic FNAF animatronic ever. He has like 15 variations on his design over the past eight years since the series has been active. So yeah, I want to know, I need, I expect to see Freddy 
on the big screen. And if he isn't there, I will riot at the local Chuck E. Cheese. And it ain't Fredbear. With the concept of a Mike screenplay, I think that everything relating to the major events in not just Michael's life, but the Afton Slimes as a whole would be essential to see. Especially a moment as life changing as the bite of 83. So the Fredbear animatronic in non-nightmare form is a must in my eyes, but also not very likely, unless it's like a flashback sequence, they're probably not going to worry about the events of the games. But this would probably just be in an effort to confirm the main character as Mike and prove that Mike isn't crying child. But also as an easter egg for fans that will hopefully have the 1983 date on the flashback. But then again, every 87 believer is going to say that they're different universes so it doesn't count as confirmation. Either way, I think a Fredbear appearance is kind of mandatory, but I'm not in the movie, so who knows what they think is required. Scott, you should have put me in the movie. How many FNAF videos have I f***ing made at this point? 500? Yeah. God. How about doing a number five, Springtrap? Springtrap is also kind of a mandatory appearance in my mind because after all, he's the main antagonist of the series. And while the story is about Mike, based on the games, the only version of William that could appear is Springtrap. If you think about it, Michael was a teen or close to it in 1983, meaning that by the time the first game comes around in 1993, he would probably be around 23 to 26. But at this point, William was also already Springtrap, since as we're going through the FNAF 3 minigames, we see Mangle walking around, meaning that this takes place around FNAF 2, but shortly after so that the toy animatronics could get scrapped. So unless this takes place while Mike is a teenager, which could make sense given the demographic of the FNAF fandom, the only real version of William that is at least part animatronic since this list is the animatronics we want to see in the movie, would be Springtrap, since Scraptrap doesn't come until Michael's death in FNAF 6, and they wouldn't kill off the protagonist of the movie in the first movie, and Burn Trap doesn't come until after Mike is actually dead. So, yes, the only version of William that has robotic parts that could be in this movie would be Springtrap. Springtrap isn't a full animatronic, but you know what, it's my list. And at three, Nightmare on. Nightmare on is the antagonist exclusive to the Halloween DLC for FNAF 4, and is a returning character in Ultimate Custom Night. Nightmare on is a human-like animatronic that has a white mask with black tears, black lipstick, white dots for eyes, and has a row of teeth on the top and six teeth at the bottom. His body is black and is designed to look like a skeleton. He also has a large chest with ribs protruding from the sides like a little weirdo like me, okay? I got, I, you can see my ribs under here. <laughs> Slender body, skeletal legs, and arms with claws protruding at the end, and with white stripes at the end of his fingers. During the night, Nightmare Yon will appear if the mouse cursor lingers over him. And once that starts happening, the player must avoid the area where he is. Taking too long to do so will cause Nightmare Yon to fully reappear and jump scare you. So, don't do it. But ultimately, in at number two, a surprise guest, Mr. Hippo. Mr. Hippo is a viable animatronic from FNAF 6 and returns as an antagonist in Ultimate Custom Night. Mr. Hippo climbs through the duct system trying to reach one of the two hoses in the office. The player needs to use the audio lure to keep him in place or they can use the heater to push him back. He is fooled 100% of the time by the audio lure and faster than Happy Frog. However, most of the scare factor doesn't come from their behavior. Okay, or their design, but this time around, rather, Mr. Hippo's death lines. You see, Mr. Hippo has a knack for going on about things a lot, going on tangents, kind of like me, honestly. But he goes into like five minute long speeches that you have to deal with every time he kills you. Meaning that if you get jump scared, you're boned for enough time to make a sandwich, which is annoying as hell. Get scared by him enough and eventually you'll end up being terrified of him because you know what comes after the smoke of the jump scare clears. And finally, in at number one, Nightmare. Nightmare is the main antagonist of FNAF 4 who returns in Ultimate Custom Night. Nightmare is a bipedal black nightmare bear animatronic. His face features contain scratches and distorts all over. His muzzle and jaw contains white sharp teeth with blood stains in the corner near his black gums and another set of teeth inside his mouth. The dude is like a, a demented, like one of those chickens that are like fully black including their organs. He's like one of those but an animatronic bear. His eyes contain black eyelids, red irises, and he has a shiny yellow hat because of course he does he's a version of Freddy his body features contain a lighter accent on his large stomach and he has a shiny yellow bow tie and another set of teeth crossing over his stomach this dude has so many teeth 
Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare are actually a tag team duo in Ultimate Custom Night, invisible to the cameras, and they can only be seen when they reach your doorway. Wonderful. Fredbear will take the left, Nightmare will take the right. And even then, only their eyes are visible, okay? When you see this, you gotta close the doors on their faces to send them back into the depths of hell from whence they came. In a 10, Reaper Mangle. Reaper Mangle is absolutely terrifying. Some may just be... Scary because of circumstance, but Reaper Mangle comes from Final Nights 3 and 4. But I want to focus on the Final Nights 4 version, okay, since that one is actually terrifying. The one from the third game just kind of looks like a Lego Duplo version of Mangle. In the fourth game, however, Mangle's face appears to be melted and decaying, as if it was chewing gum, but the gum was its face. And there is basically no exterior shell on this thing, except for the face. Slightly on the left arm, but oh my god. Honestly, you can only tell this is Mangle because because of the name and the color scheme. Other than that, if someone looked at this only knowing Mangle by their appearance in FNAF 2, it would take them a little while before they actually realized who it was meant to be. The Reaper animatronics are terrifying, but they get far worse in Final Nights 4. And at 9, Chuck E. Cheese. No, I'm not kidding. Someone actually made Chuck E. Cheese canon in the fan FNAF world. I, I don't know what particular game he comes from, if any. I just, I saw him on the FNAF RP fandom wiki page and just kind of coward in my pants. He's just a recolored Freddy Fazbear and doesn't really have much other than a couple of images in the FNAF world other than that, the one maybe, but like I I'm sure you know what Chuck E. Cheese looks like, okay? Apparently, Chuck E. got sent to Freddy's as a guest star, but also started moving around at night. Well, since CEC, the parent company for Chuck E. Cheese, did file for bankruptcy, at least in part, this might actually come true. And if it does, if there is some form of FNAF Chuck E. Cheese crossover, I'm going to cry. There have also been reports of children going missing and animatronics moving after hours in Chuck E. Cheese locations, but these stories aren't true. And to anyone saying that the closed Chuck E. Cheese's should be redesigned into Fazbear locations, um, yes. Okay, you should go watch our videos, but also it may not be a good idea considering how many kids got stuff. But we made a whole, a whole video series about how they could do that. And it ain't Ignited Chica. Ignited Chica comes from the joy of creation, one of the most terrifying fan games ever. Scott's lucky that he didn't make this game, because if he did, nobody would play it out of sheer fear. Like, I don't know how horror junkies do it. Why do you like being scared? It's supposed to be a bad thing. Anyway, Ignited Chica is similar to the other Ignited animatronics, just a more decayed and rundown version of the original. And while Eddie may not be trying to get with this one, and I'm not really either, there is a clear reason why, okay? The jaw is gone. Leaving only the top part of the beak and a load of exposed wire, okay? Half of her left arm is gone and her entire right arm is gone aside from like a, a little bit of endoskeleton, okay? And just, and look at the feet. Like, oh man, Chica, like I, I can see your wiki feet score going down already. Okay, honestly, it's probably not going down. There are people who are into some really weird stuff. Like I'm not kink shaming. I mean, I make jokes about banging a toy animatronic regularly, but like, it's, it's not weird to them. It's only weird to people with a conscience. Moving on! In its 7, Nightmare Chica. Nightmare Chica isn't a selectable character in Ultimate Custom Night, but is rather a secret character in the game that is spawned in by Dee Dee. Nightmare Chica's jaws will appear on the screen when she's spawned in. The player needs to turn on the power or AC to prevent her mouth from closing and never appear again. That's absolutely terrifying! Okay, just slowly watching the jaws of death surround your face after just randomly being summoned is absolutely shocking. Like, how do you react to that? You don't even need to see the animatronic for this to be absolutely terrifying, and that's saying something. Like, all, like you're just chilling there, and all of a sudden, this little pops up, she's like, how unfortunate, and then boom, you got the jaws of sudden death surrounding your mall. Like, why did you have to do this to Mommy Chica, okay? In nightmare form, nonetheless. At least put me in Toy Chica's mouth, damn it. And it's six, Jacko Chica. Jacko Chica is an antagonist exclusive to the Halloween update DLC for Five Nights at Freddy's 4, replacing Nightmare Chica, but she returns as an antagonist in Ultimate Custom Night. Jacko Chica is a Halloween-themed version of her original counterpart, Nightmare Chica, and 
and is a distorted, nightmarish version of Chica with several sharp teeth and wires sticking out from the torn parts of her body. Unlike her original counterpart though, she lacks eyes and an endoskeleton head. Instead, having a bright orange light in her eye sockets and torso, and an orange tint to fit with the Halloween theme. She also carries around a jack-o-lantern instead of her iconic cupcake. When the office heats up to 90 degrees, Jacko Chica will appear in both halls at the same time. Once she is fully materialized, she will then jump scare the player ending the game. The only way to stop her is by closing the left and right doors at the same time to make her vanish, but this will not work if the office reaches 100 degrees or more. Damn, now we gotta deal with heat too? Jesus. How are we doing at number 5, XOR? XOR is a special variation of DD in Ultimate Custom Night that replaces DD when playing 50-20 mode and on very rare occasions during normal gameplay. XOR, also known as Shadow DD, resembles the shadow animatronics that appear in FNAF 2 and 3 and has a, a name that's kind of similar to the animatronic known by most fans as Shadow Bonnie. It is unknown if it is intentional or by coincidence, but while XOR cannot attack the player, she can appear in the office, rapidly sliding left and right while singing a distorted version of Dee Dee's song that's actually also in reverse. This is followed by a guitar riff signaling that if playing 50-20 mode she has added all of the six secret characters that are not available in the selection screen. Okay, RWQFFASXC, which is Shadow Bonnie, Plus Trap, Nightmare Chica, Bonnet, Mini Renas, and Lolbit. If she appears during normal gameplay she will either add a new character with a randomized setting from 1 to 20 or only one of the secret characters. Luckily. And for Helpy. Helpy is a small plastic figure from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. He is also a returning character as an opponent in Ultimate Custom Night. Helpy is a mini version of Funtime Freddy from Sister Location. He has a white body with purple accents, pink cheeks, the ones on his face, get your head out of the gutter, a small black top hat, short black eyebrows, and he has eyes that have purple eyelids and blue pupils. Against his original counterpart, he has two circular hands, four fingers, and has no toes and no face blades. Helpy also seems to be pretty fragile since every time the player fails, in a mini game, he ends up breaking his neck. R.I.P. Helpy. When Helpy appears in the office in Ultimate Custom Night, the player needs to click on him quickly, or he'll end up getting too close with an air horn, agitating sound sensitive animatronics like uh, Music Man up at the top. He also increases by one fast coin every time the player clicks on him. Getting close to the end in number three, Havoc Freddy. What the f is this thing? Like, this thing has to be the most confusing form of Freddy that we have ever seen in any version of the game. Same Patty's Day Freddy? Normal. Icicle Freddy? Normal. What the hell is this? He looks like an even more canine version of Mangle with Foxy's arm in his mouth, holding a sign that says, I look like a toaster with a slice of bread. And that's not a joke. I'm actually serious. He's holding an arm that is holding a sign that says that it looks like a toaster with a slice of bread. What? If the sheer confusion isn't enough to put you off, it's also missing an eye, even though it has another head attached to it, that it looks like the eyes were torn out of that too. Go find those eyes, my dude! Can you tell that this series of games is driving me crazy? Like, at this point, we've done more FNAF videos than I feel like anyone else on YouTube. There is over 450 FNAF videos in the playlist, and I've done the majority of them. I have done over a year's worth of FNAF videos. But ultimately, in the number two, blank. The blank animatronic from Five Nights at Candy's and Five Nights at Candy's Remastered is actually very unique in concept. No doubt being inspired by Mango, I think, though. He is a drawing attraction that is meant for children to write and draw wherever they want on his body. Over time, the animatronic was obviously withered down, and the withered version from the second game is where we'll be focusing for this number. Withered Blank is the most withered out of any of the animatronics. All of his suit parts seem to be damaged in one way or another. A large part of the left side of his head is gone, exposing his endoskeleton, his left forearm and right upper arm are missing their exoskeletons, and while his right forearm is completely gone, all suit parts below his knees are also gone, and there are two holes in his torso. One of the holes exposes an endoskeleton. His texture isn't even white anymore, rather more of a gray color. Like the shirt you forgot to wash that just isn't the same anymore. Unless you use today's sponsor, I'm, I'm just kidding, we're not sponsored. Blank also can be seen unwithered in the first minigame, but he appears to be the same as he was in the first game, so yeah. But in Night 
night six of the second minigame, the player also can see Blank's original appearance, which is actually kind of cool. It's a cool concept. And finally, in at number one, Withered Glitch Trap. You can fight me all you want about my opinions on Spring Trap, but there is no way that you can fight me on the fact that Glitch Trap isn't an animatronic. Firstly, he's just game code, with no real world equivalent aside from William Afton and I guess technically now Burn Trap and Vanny. Secondly, he was literally just a suit. You can tell by the fabric, the different design to the Bonnie we all know and love, kind of, and the stitching around his joints. But this version of Glitch Trap, specifically this one, known as Withered Glitch Trap by Shadow Foxy on Amino, is designed to be an animatronic, therefore it counts for this list. Th this thing is terrifying. Like, I've always had a soft spot for Glitch Trap. I, I, I hate this thing because, like, it gives me, um, creepy bear vibes, if you know what I mean, like the, the old, old uncle. You know, it's an old meme, but it checks out. Anyway, I hate these kinds of things. And the way that Glitch Trap just like stands there and waves and then slowly gl gets closer to you as the player while you're slowly picking up these car the, the, the tapes, who it, it, you're also playing as a child in that game, indicated by your height when you load up the game. It doesn't sit right with me. Hence why I avoid picking up the tapes, because I know that it's going to summon him. Now, with all of that said and done, this version is actually worse. The actual withered appearance along with the desaturation of the costume and the exposed endoskeleton is just, it's too much for me, and I can't do this anymore. I'm done! And it's in Clown Springtrap. Clown Springtrap is Springtrap's third skin and the third skin to be introduced in the Dark Circus event. Clown Springtrap has a pale white suit with blue and purple makeup above his eyes. He has messy purple hair coming out of the top of his head, of course, and large red lipstick as well, a la Joker or Pennywise. I guess more so Joker. Clown Springtrap's body is mostly covered by a large suit with ripped up black pants and a black shirt, along with a red and purple vest. He features large red clown shoes along with a red bow tie and flower on his chest. His right eyelid has also been stitched up. Finally, he carries around a very large red mallet in his left hand. And considering how clowns are one of the most common fears in the world, with more people in the United States being scared of clowns than actual global warming, I think putting Clown Springtrap on this list when he is intentionally just a clown is definitely understandable, okay? Even if it's on your phone, this dude is menacing. And he has a hammer. And a nine Easter Bonnie. Easter Bonnie, aside from being the best pun the series has ever released, is probably the kind of bunny your parents will make you sit with at the mall, but you'd be crying the whole time. Like Matt from In the Flesh, from what should have been the final Fazbear Frights book, Bunny Call, which is totally meant to be a fanfic about Matt Pet. Like, is this his way of asking Matt if he wants to work on another FNAF VR game? I don't know. Are these Scott's deepest fantasies? <laughs> well, no matter what. This bunny is creepy. This version of Bonnie hails from like the Easter update and was the only skin added aside from like chocolate Bonnie, but it's basically just a, a white Bonnie, but with glowing blue eyes, a glowing red mouth, a yellow bow tie, and then an egg pattern on his stomach. I can't really explain why I find this so unsettling. Uh, maybe because I constantly get chocolate bunnies around Easter and I don't want to think about an animatronic trying to kill me because you know, I'm eating a chocolate bunny, but uh, what do I know, right? Apparently not myself. This one is just, it's weird, okay? It, it looks like it can crack me. I can't crack it, but it can crack me. And it ate Broiler Baby. Broiler Baby was the first skin for Circus Baby in Special Delivery and is the second skin for the Sizzling Summer Event. Broiler Baby for the most part looks exactly like Circus Baby, except for the fact that she is covered in soot and has red eyes instead of green. She also features a large broiler on her stomach, and instead of a microphone, she carries a coal shovel. Uh, the inside of her mask also seems to be lit up by fire, because of course it is, she comes from the depths of hell. And the red eyes are not only meant to indicate fire, but also I'm sure to let us know that this version of Baby is not possessed by Elizabeth Abbott since Baby's eyes were originally blue, but then changed to green when she got possessed. And not only does the inside of her head look like she was on fire, but her endoskeleton also appears to be red hot. The coal shovel kind of looks like a feather if you squint at it, but all this begs the question, why? Where did this come from? And how did this happen? Especially in the actual FNAF world. Like, like what's the lore reason for this and any of these? And it's seven, the BOA. The BOA is basically like another form of Mangle, but this time hailing from the Dormitibus universe. I say this is Mangle-like because of the multiple heads and exposed endoskeletons connecting them all. The 2018 updated version is far more hectic than the original as well, but it just seems kind of smaller. I don't know why, but animatronics that can kill me by biting my ankles off just put me, they put me off in a different way when compared to something like Foxy or Dreadbear who could crush me with a snap. 
like the, like the little Freddies and the plush trap and then like the plush babies. No, 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 no. And this thing doesn't make it any better, considering how it has five heads. The head of Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Mangle, Balloon Boy, and Toy Chica. Mommy, why? But it also has the hook from Foxy just chilling, ready to tear your face off and like then lay eggs inside your brain. I don't know, okay? The story for Demitibus is really messed up and I don't really quite understand it all. So I'm not sure what this thing is really going to do. Uh, and don't worry, this isn't the only Dormitibus animatronic on this list. And it's six, Reaper Balloon Boy. Reaper Balloon Boy looks terrifying in both Final Nights 3 and 4, the only games in which he makes an appearance. I, luckily. But as I said with Reaper Mangle, Final Nights 4 is where the creep factor really gets dialed up to 12. His face is melting, and hell, even his balloon is showing endoskeleton, which totally blows my mind. And the propellers on his hats are just going nuts. The right hand of Doom got run over by a truck, and his left hand looks like he, me trying to use chopsticks. But like, at least you can tell that it's still Balloon Boy, despite messed up attributes. I can't help but get weirded out by this thing. Like, I swear, as I was writing this, I had to picture, I had like, I had the picture up next to me, I saw him move towards me and then back away as I moved my eyes back, okay? It was a horrifying experience and I really need to make sure that I'm doing okay because I swear he just like, he tilted his head now. Really? I, 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 I get that his head is tilted to the right, but like, come on. And anytime I refer to direction, I mean from their point of view, okay? Because I, I learned my lesson with Bonnie. Halfway through into number five, Scrap Puppet. I don't know why, but every version of the puppet intended to be scary just gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't have puppophobia, but it, it does. First, the Reaper puppet, which I talked about in the first scariest FNAF animatronics list years ago, and honestly, it was the inspiration behind this video. And then the Havoc puppet from another video. And now we have the Scrap Puppet. This was only a concept in fan art and doesn't actually appear in any fan game, but this wasn't the criteria, okay? This isn't top 10 scary FNAF fan animatronics that appear in games. No, it's, it's, it's the fan, it's fan animatronics. It's fine, although that is a good idea. Uh, no, no it's, it's just fan animatronics. And while some people may not be able to make a game for their creations, they can still draw them and give me nightmares for all of eternity. The particular image that I found has just like what looks like the beginning of a scrap puppet jump scare when you're salvaging them in FNAF 6, but obviously it isn't the actual game because the puppet was captured by Lefty. But this still sets me on edge with the tentacles coming off of it and like that creepy smile, oh my god. In it for Ignited Foxy. Ignited Foxy is similar to normal Foxy, just with only a pelvis, thighs, a forearm, and a head. Relatable. Ignited Foxy comes from the joy of creation, the same as Ignited Chica, but Foxy is even worse. Normal Foxy already looks pretty torn up, considering how he's a pirate and all that, but the Ignited version is missing an ear and most of his flesh. Can I call it flesh? Should I be calling it flesh? I guess it's... It, it's missing most of its shell casing. Both lower leg sections, his upper arm, his lower right arm, as well as his feet and chest are also missing, but the hook's still there. Yeah, he's gotta have the hook. Arr! He has to keep the hook. How else is he gonna make those 1000 degree hook videos where he like puts it through like flowering foam and then carves your eye out? His eyes glow white and honestly, I don't know if you'll love this foxy as much as you'll love the normal Foxy after seeing this, because it's terrifying, like holy hell. Getting close to the end in number three, Sunken Toy Bonnie. Sunken Toy Bonnie is Toy Bonnie's third skin. Sunken Toy Bonnie looks basically identical to Toy Bonnie, but made entirely out of brown and green barnacle covered woods. His stomach is colored with dull pinks, blues, and purples, and he appears to be made of a more glossy shell-like substance or texture. His bow tie is now made up of two purple scallops, and his cheeks have large lime-colored clams covering them. His ear has a large chip in it, and his tail has large vein-like strains of stone covering it. And I don't, I don't like it, okay? It feels weird. I don't like veiny things. Finally, his eyes are a multi colored watery texture that looks somewhat like opal or like a very blurry coral reef, okay? I don't know what I'm trying to relate it to in the ocean other than a clam. Basically, a Bonnie animatronic, if they were a Scooby-Doo beach villain like the ghost of Captain Cutler, that's this guy. You're welcome. But ultimately, in at number two, Piranha Plush Trap. 
Piranha Plush Trap is Plush Trap's second skin in FNAF AR and the third skin in the Wicked Tides event. He released on June 7, 2019, I think, and after being delayed by three days for unknown reasons, he actually finally showed up for work. We actually made a community post about this, and it was ages ago, but uh, personally, this is one of the scariest FNAF AR skins that anyone has ever had. Piranha Plush Trap is hardly like the original Plush Trap, now being made of an organic flesh like material, even giving him realistic gums. This is like Sonic's original CGI form all over again. His mouth is littered with long, thin, sharp teeth, and his eyes are extremely small and glow an ocean blue color because you know what? That's what matters here. On the sides of his head are two glowing orange gills, and his feet glow that same orange. His hands have orange webbing in between them that stretches when his fingers move. His ears are covered in small barnacles, and his mouth, stomach, and right leg are all covered in string-like algae. Finally, his body is covered in spikes, and his torso is split open, revealing ribs. This thing is horrifying. I just hope we get to see him in another game that's not special delivery. I want to see Piranha Plush Trap in some other form. Dude reminds me of a zebra muscle. And finally, in a number one, Great Escape Golden Freddy. Golden Freddy returns as an enemy in FNAF AR Special Delivery and actually as a playable character in Freddy in Space 2. But, Great Escape Golden Freddy, or for sh short, I guess, Great Escape Freddy, I'm just gonna call him Great Escape, is the first skin that Golden Freddy has ever gotten in FNAF AR. He received this skin as a part of the um, special mixed reality DLC game mode part of Dark Circus Encore that released on December 13th, 2021. He's available exclusively through purchasing and beating that DLC content. Great Escape Golden Freddy is identical to Golden Freddy in coloration, still being yellow, but now is a much duller shade, with black and green splotches on his head, legs, and feet. His head is severely withered in multiple areas, with most of it deteriorated or just flat out missing, including half of his top hat. His eye sockets are also completely empty, with holes going through the endoskeleton head, and a chain is running around his mouth. Dude likes it kinky. He wears a brown straight jacket with multiple golden chains running across it with multiple locks. Dude's like an escape artist because, you know, great escape. Boxes and a giant metallic collar are also around his neck. These chains also run down his upper legs with some hooks dangling from them. It's genuinely one of, if not the scariest skin in the game. It's a tie between this and Piranha Plush Trap, but I put this one first because it's newer. But it's also a mobile game, so it takes a lot to actually make it scary, and these last two do that. In a 10, the Purple Guy Animatronic. The Purple Guy Animatronic Legend is an urban legend revolving around FNAF in early 2015. A YouTube video surface that reportedly showed a hidden animatronic reported to be the Purple Guy, who was at the time the only name we had for the main antagonist. The appearance of the Purple Animatronic was preceded by a phone ringing because we thought that he was also the phone guy. And then after the phone rang, the purple animatronic would briefly flash on screen, slumped over against the wall in the office in a similar style to Golden Freddy. However, it was soon revealed that this was simply because the animatronic was simply a photoshopped image of Golden Freddy with a purple color and Chica's head. I think that it's pretty obvious that it was photoshopped and I mean that like we've used that image in thumbnails a couple of times but no character like this has ever showed up in any of the games. But nevertheless I'd still like to see it appear in the movie as like an easter egg or a reference, okay? Same thing for in at number 9 Buff Helpy. This meme created by at Dominius on Twitter Buff Helpy was made for the YouTuber Daco's FNAF meme reviews since that was his, the primary content on his channel at the time. He made a joke in the video where he pretended to be terrified of it and then people started sending him tons of memes about that one single image. It has since spread from there, leading to Buff Helpy even getting his own spin-off game. Yeah, he even has his own Urban Dictionary page that labels him as a traitor to his country who loves stalking the YouTuber Daco and somehow always makes it into Daco's FNAF meme reviews. Followed by the use of the term in Buff Helpy is best boy. Buff Helpy is not best boy, okay? And this entire thing was posted by a user called Buff Helpy Enthusiast. And you know what? Buff Helpy has also haunted me. I hadn't seen any of Dago's FNAF meme reviews, so luckily I was oblivious to this. However, people just started randomly sending it to me on Instagram, and then it kind of scared me from there. And while it may be haunting, at least a mention of it in the movie would be very much appreciated, like how Sanic was referenced in the Sonic movie. And it's seven flaming spring trap. 
Flaming Spring Trap was also added during the Sizzling Summer event and was understandably the final skin to be added in the update. Being Spring Trap's second skin behind Toxic Spring Trap, we weren't quite sure what to expect. But have you ever wondered what Spring Trap looked like during the FNAF 6 fire? Or wondered what it was like in my old apartment or in this current apartment before they turned the AC on? This is what it feels like. This also answers the original question because he's definitely the kind of person to absorb up all the flames and then use them to his advantage. Flaming Spring Trap is a coal colored Spring Trap with dark orange highlights and he's glowing orange from his endoskeleton since it's burning hot. His flames spouting out of every area possible and uh, he's just he's ready for the thousand degree endoskeleton challenge. His hands and feet are also on fire for some reason. He also has no upper teeth for another reason, okay? You know what? This thing is just horrifying. If, if these are real animatronics in the FNAF universe and Fazbear Entertainment is actually sending these to people's homes, why are you sending a flaming serial killer to your fans' houses? It makes no sense. It's, it's just, it's befuddling to me how these things are supposed to be real, but everything flies, okay? And, and the, the skins are actually canon as we see in Furry's Rage, so... Yeah. God damn it. And it's six, Clockwork Ballora. Man, okay, with Minecraft getting those copper blocks in the previous update, Steampunk seems to be all over the place now. Clockwork Ballora is Ballora's second skin in FNAF AR and the first skin of the Scream Punk event. Clockwork Ballora looks pretty much exactly like normal Ballora, but made entirely out of golden gears and plates, cause steampunk. Her crown and her shoulder pads have become very large gears and her lower legs, section of her arm and her pelvis are all a rust colored and you know what I'm sure that makes all you simps feel really weird about yourself. That's right you're gonna get tetanus where the sun don't shine. Her tutu is made up of a large rotating gear and it also looks like it can play records but I don't even want to get into that. Her top is made up of a rust colored bottom piece and a black colored top piece with a rose pattern on it and finally the gold plates that make up her face, arms and legs are welded into a Victorian style set of patterns with some red colored indents. But you know what, this time around she comes with similarly styled mini renas. The clockwork mini renas look like clockwork Ballora except their faces have blood stains on them and glowing green eyes, which is all the more menacing, okay? Blood stained faces. Love it. How we do it at number five, the curse. Yes, there are three separate Springtrap skins on this list, leave me alone. The Curse is an Aztec themed skin for Springtrap that was released on March 5th in the Ancient Equinox event and is the fourth skin for Springtrap overall in the game. The Curse is a teal color Springtrap dressed to look like an ancient Aztec warrior. He has a large feathered crown and a golden chest piece. His hands are colored orange with sharp black claws and in one of them he holds a large golden shield. Dude's coming for my wig. Finally, he is decorated head to toe in large feathers. Because of course he is. This guy looks like he's actually decaying, finally, which is certainly a better spin on things, since decaying bodies aren't usually purple, even though the series seems to try to push that idea, okay? Bruises are purple, decay is commonly at least depicted as green, much like how Springtrap's suit in its curse form is dark green. This also could be a subtle reference to the fact that Afton is a curse on the entire series and on my life, and we can never get rid of him in any meaningful way. Or maybe just about how Glitchtrap and the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, he's a curse there. You know what, who knows? I do. I, I know, and he is a curse on the entire series and needs to die permanently. And for Flamethrower Bear Endo. Flamethrower Bear Endo was a new summer themed animatronic added into the July 23rd, 2020 update for FNAF AR, known as the Sizzling Summer Event. Yes, that's right, we got uh, the other Sizzling Summer. We got all the Sizzling Summer Event animatronics on this list. Flamethrower Bear Endo is an orange skeleton with a large red welding mask and two large gas canisters on his back. The canisters are hooked up to a flamethrower attached to his arm. And and while not the most intimidating character looks wise, the fact that this character straight up has a flamethrower probably makes him the most dangerous one out of the bunch. Some of these sure have their advantages, but I mean like, some are only good in water. Okay, this dude will burn your house down for fun and won't regret a thing, mostly because robots don't have emotions. But still, that's something to be scared of. This guy was built to burn down, and I don't think that he'll be waiting for your approval before going berserk, but I don't know, maybe he's a sweet guy. Maybe he is. You know what, 
maybe you can fix him. Getting close to the end of the number three, the puppet. The puppet is an animatronic puppet, obviously. That is a major antagonist, but also a good guy in the FNAF series. First appearing as the main antagonist of FNAF 2, but on later games showing its heroic side, it possibly serves as the prize vendor of the newly refurbished Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria in 1987, the one FNAF 2, which also is a new one, but then also ends up becoming the old one. Although it's implied that it was originally from Fred Bear's Family Diner, and that's a whole other can of worms that I am not going to talk about, because hell no. After the pizzeria was only open for a few short weeks, though, it was closed down. But the puppet, unlike the other toy animatronic who were scrapped, possibly due to malfunctions, was not scrapped, later appearing in the new pizzeria from the first game, as evidenced by the dream cutscenes, and appearing as Lefty in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, aka FNAF 6. Lefty was an animatronic intended to capture the puppet, because Charlotte's father, Henry, knew that her soul possessed the animatronic. However, it's also widely believed that Charlotte was William's first victim, meaning that overall they have the most significance to the story. So definitely required if we're going to have a story based on William Afton's crime spree and how it affects his only living child, which is the whole concept for FNAF. So I'm guessing it's gonna happen. Penultimately, in at number two, Foxy. Now while Foxy may be a fan favorite and one of the core animatronics, it's pretty much guaranteed that he'll be in the movie. Although while being in the core cast, there is another reason we need to see Foxy on the silver screen in the Mike story. Foxy bro. See, before we had seemingly confirmed the name of the older brother, since we were flip-flopping between whether Michael was the older brother or crying child's name, the only thing that we knew about the brother was that he enjoyed wearing the Foxy mask to scare crying child. Seemingly also ripping the head off the stuffed version of the character, possibly due to jealousy. So we ended up nicknaming Michael Foxy bro, mostly thanks to MatPat's suggestion. So I think that an animatronic that was highly associated with the character of Mike, or who at least we think Mike is, should absolutely be in the movie. And if not, I'm gonna be mad, all right? I wanna see a hook. And finally, in at number one, Nightmares. I think that if this is really meant to be a horror movie, which it is, I mean, it's being produced by Blumhouse, after all, the company that made Paranormal Activity, the Nightmares are basically a requirement to actually make this scary. Sorry, but the normal animatronics aren't really all that terrifying. The scariest part about those games is the sounds that appear with the animatronics, but the Nightmares are truly terrifying, and one of the reasons I don't want to play FNAF 4 or the Night Terror levels of Help Wanted. It's why I didn't complete the game, because I would have had to play those. Th these things are just absolutely horrific and iconic within the series, especially since they're the reason there is a movie at all. As you well know, at this point, Scott was planning on ending the series after game 3, but the hate on the Springtrap jump scare made him make another game, and which was FNAF 4, and then he kept on going. If not for the Nightmare animatronics and the Springtrap hate, there wouldn't be a FNAF movie, and I think that that deserves to be represented. Of course in a dream sequence, but still, it's worth it.